uh, they got it ready, and we'll be having this when we preach uh, on the streets, and when we evangelize, we'll be using this banner, and people can see this. As you can see, they can see it, and it draws men into it. They, they'll read it from a long ways away. They'll see that, and they'll start coming over. It'll, this will bring conversations about, this banner will. Uh, it, it just does. We watched it, didn't we, brother? We were in Michigan. It just it brings conversations. I mean, people come, they want to they ask you questions about it. They ask, sometimes they don't know what one of those words mean up there even. What does that mean? And they ask you a question. You can sit and you can talk to them about it, and you can share the gospel with them. And and uh, and try to reach him for Christ, Amen. So that's what that's that's just used for that purpose. It's it's kind of uh, it it draws attention there, and and it's uh, I I like this better than than uh, you know wearing a bunch of clothes that you know I, I've seen some of that. I, I I'm not I'm not saying those guys are wrong for doing it. I just don't like it really. Um, <clears throat> it draws attention to me more than it does to the to the message. I think. But you know, there's differences of opinion on that, and we can we can have those, amen. But uh, that's fine. No, no, no big deal there. I'm just happy men want to go out and do something for the Lord, amen. That's that's the most important thing that people want to do something for Jesus Christ. Get out there and preach the truth to people. All right. Well, listen, brother Bicey, did you start the audio yet? Is is the audio file on yet or no? It is? Okay, good. Okay, well, listen, turn your Bibles to Jeremiah chapter 7, if you would, please. We're going to talk about something here. This is kind of goes along with our Nimrod study here. I'm going to put it under the Babylon study, uh, the, the Babylon, what we've been discussing on, on Babylon. And, and the reason for that is because the spirit is the same. In fact, the next message that I have for you, the next hour, will be will also cover, it'll cover Jezebel. And we're going to talk about that Jeze a Jezebel, Jezebel spirit, and what that means. Uh, what exactly the Bible is discussing there. Because, you know, these things are not, God doesn't put them in there just once and then you never hear about it again. God puts this in there because you see it in the beginning, you see it in the times of the kings, you'll see that Jezebel. Then you'll see at the end in the book of Revelation, the Bible says that Jezebel was, that, was used to seduce. She was a prophetess, we're going to talk about that the next hour, used to seduce the people of God uses seduce his servants even, and uh, which is true if you understand who that is and what that is. So anyway, but uh, Jeremiah chapter 7, let's pray. Father, we need you. Lord, I, I just pray you bless this study. Help us to understand what you're saying here and why it's so important to, to study these matters out and to preach on these things in the scriptures, Lord. Please help us to understand this. Help us to apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, there's a, there's a spiritual fornication that the Bible talks about. And, and this spiritual fornication is, is prevalent all through the Scriptures. It's a seducing spirit that comes and tries to sway the people of God. And we see it all through the days of Israel, even into the New Testament. What we see is a seducing spirit. Now, this has to do with, with seducing, with um, this fornication that's being talked about. is not physical, it's spiritual. It's speaking of the spirit. It's speaking of a, a false spirit, a false worship, a false god. That, that, that has been that has uh, seduced the people of God or that was used a false religion. Many times the Bible calls it adulterous or a fornicating or a, a whore or a harlot. It calls them by that to deal with spiritual fornication that seduces them away from the truth. I believe that because the Bible says it. I believe it very it's very clear and we need to understand that out here today in this world, there are so many different Gospels that are being preached. There are so many different seducing spirits and cults and everything else that are being preached out there today that are drawing men away from the truth. They're there to draw men. What they want to do is get you away from this book. If they can get you away from this King James Bible and have you stop searching the Scriptures to see if these things are so, if they can get you to stop listening... If they can get the preacher to stop preaching on the touchy things in the book, the things that hurt, the things that prick our consciences, if he'll stop preaching on those things, then what happens? Then seducing spirits come in and draw men away. You know, it, I, I've heard this 
statistic before, and I'm not sure how accurate it is, but it makes a lot of sense. They say that most Jehovah's Witnesses, their, uh, what do they call that? Kingdom Hall, is that what they call it? Uh, Kingdom Hall and, and the Mormon Temple, uh, which is a Mason Temple, which is an esoteric temple. Anyway, but, but that's, that's what it is. It's all the same thing, which is the same thing as Islam. Uh, they're all they're all connected anyway. But but the, but if you if you look into that, what you will find is that most are former Southern Baptists that are in those places. Most are fundamental ba that were fundamental Baptists that were swayed. Now that doesn't mean they were saved. They could have been lost, but they were there and present in those churches. What happened to them? Somebody came along and wanted to do a Bible study with them. Yeah, somebody came along and gave them some literature. Somebody came along and gave them something. What is that? That's spiritual fornication. That's what that is. Trying to get you away from this book. Trying to get you away. Now, Bible study is not wrong, but let's be, let's be clear. It's got to be Bible study. It's got to be real Bible study. Amen? It's got to be from the Bible. From the, when I say Bible, I mean the King James Bible. I don't move on that. I'm not moving on that. All right. The scriptures say here in Jeremiah chapter 7, verse number 3, and then we're going to read 16 through 19. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, amend your ways and your doings, and I will cause you to dwell in this place. Therefore pray not thou for this people, neither lift up cry nor pray for them, neither make intercession to me. For I will not hear thee. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem? The children gather wood and the fathers kindle with a fire and the women knead their dough to make cakes to the queen of heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Do they provoke me to anger, saith the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Confusion. That's the name of the devil's game right there, to confuse you, to get you off of, to spiritually get you to spiritually fornicate and to get away from this book and away from the truth. That's what it is. You know, we're going to talk about that in the next hour. We talk about that Jezebel spirit. That's, that's that goal, too. That's the goal of that Jezebel, same mystery Babylon, same thing. It's all the same. They're all, they're all, the, same, they're all the same player, okay, with a different name, but playing the same game. That's what they are. Bible says in Revelation chapter 17, it says, With whom the kings of the earth, uh, I'm sorry, verse number 2 through 6 and 15 through 18, with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication. Now, is he talking about literal fornication? No, he's talking about spiritual fornication. He's talking about the leaders of this world. Remember the great conspiracy in Psalm chapter, Psalms chapter 2? Do you remember that great conspiracy? The kings of the earth have conspired against the Lord. Remember that conspiracy that's there? So people say, there's no such thing as a worldwide... Oh, I, I've had this said to me by very intelligent people that, that uh, like to be more intelligent than God sometimes, but, but they, they, they think they are anyway. They, they said that, well, you know, this, they couldn't have all this elaborate system in place because we just don't have things together like that. No, we don't, but the devil does. There's a spirit that works behind there. If you can't see an absolute antichrist agenda in America today, you are blind! blind. You can't see it because spiritually you've got no eyes to see with. Because it's very clear what's going on in this country today. It's very clear from the leadership down what's actually going on in this country. <laughs> when you are expelling Christians from the military, when you are telling them not to pray in Jesus' name, when they are getting rid of high-ranking generals, uh, you, <laughs> why? Why are we doing that? Well, because they can't speak the name of Christ. Why? Because the name of Christ causes conviction. That's why. So we've got to get rid of them. We don't want them talking anymore. We've got to get that spirit out of there. Why? To move in the other spirit. That's why. It says here, With whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, and the inhabitants of the earth have been made drunk with the wine of her fornication. So he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy, having seven heads and ten horns. And the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls, having a golden cup in her hand full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. Again, this is talking about spiritual. Don't miss this. This is a seducing spirit. 
This is what gives the rise to the end times of Antichrist. This is what prepares the way for it, is this spirit. This mystery Babylon spirit is the mystery of iniquity that does already work, that the Apostle Paul talked about. It is, it's just as the Holy Spirit is allowing this to take place, because why? Because God, listen, make no mistake about it, if God didn't want the Antichrist to come on the scene and do what's going to come in the end times here, well, if he didn't want him to, then he wouldn't. But this God is allowing to happen. He will only do what God allows to happen. Amen. Understand that. So he carried me away in the spirit in the wilderness, and I saw a woman sit upon a scarlet-colored beast full of names of blasphemy. Having seven heads and ten horns, and the woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet color, and decked with gold and precious stones. And pearls having a golden cup in her hand, full of abominations and filthiness of her fornication. By the way, false doctrine is filthy. The false Bible versions are filthy. Perversions of the Word of God are filthy. Why? Because they seduce into fornication, into spiritual fornication away from the truth. Now, that's hard for some people to receive. However, it's very easy to prove. It's not hard to prove. Why do you think the JWs use the New World Translation? Well, they, they use it because right now you can invent a translation for anything you want to be true. If you want a gender-neutral translation, you just invent one. Call it a Bible and everybody will follow it. Why? It's a seducing spirit. Mm -hmm. That's right, they do. They can't do that with this. It doesn't work. The fact that I've had them at my door try to do it. Man, I had that lady so mad she was running down the street away from me. Because I just told her the truth. If you believe not that I am he, shall all likewise perish. In the beginning was the word. I just kept quoting it over and over again. You could see the devil's coming out, man. I'm telling you, you could just see that, that other spirit just lose it. That's in there. You could see it. Why? Because all I did was kept quoting the word of God. In the beginning was the word, and the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory is the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Over and over again, I said, can you answer that? Can you answer that? Can you answer that? Hebrews 1, Colossians 1, can you answer any of these? Can, no, I, I can't answer that right now. I said, well, then you're going to die and go to hell in your sins then. She said, well, maybe that's going to happen to you. I go, no, I, I've been washed in the blood of Jesus Christ. I've been saved. <laughs> no, it ain't going to happen to me, friend. I, I, I know what I believe. I know it's right here. And when you speak with authority like that, that spirit of fornication leaves. Remember that. <clears throat> Upon her head was a name written, Mystery, Babylon the Great. What happened in Babylon? They, Nimrod wanted what? A great name. He got it. Mystery. Well, he didn't get it. Babylon got it. Mystery. Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. And I saw the woman drunken with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I wondered with great admiration. And he saith unto me, The waters which thou sawest, where the whore sitteth. God just shouldn't talk like that, should he? That's not very nice. No, that shows you how much God hates spiritual fornication. And, by the way, physical fornication. He hates both of them. Amen. Why? Because it mocks him, that's why. Where the whore sitteth. Are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues and the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beast? These shall hate the whore and shall make her desolate and naked and shall eat her flesh and burn her with fire. For God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and, and to agree and give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. And the woman which thou sawest, that great city which reigneth over the kings of the earth. How much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow gate give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow, and shall see no sorrow. Now who said that? Who lived their life like that? Well, the next hour we're going to talk about that, but that was Jezebel. That was that same spirit. Even after her husband was killed, even after 
Ahab was dead. Even after that, she what? She ruled as a queen. Through her son. She, she used her son, intimidated her son. Everybody knew that she, that she was in charge. I want you to think about what I just said here, because that makes a big difference in your family too, but we'll talk about that the next hour. There's a Jezebel spirit there. You better be careful. Amen? First of all, what the Bible calls this queen a whore? She has a spirit of a harlot. She has a spirit of fornication on her. And as you look at this, and we're not really going to get into the queen of heaven yet. That's going to be another day because there's so much to get through to prepare this to understand what's going on here. By the way, I hope you listened to the sermon on Wednesday night. If you didn't, I'll be uploading it and you listen to it. You really need to hear it. <clears throat> Notice how the fornication is dealt with and likened to spiritual fornication. Turn to Psalms 106, verse number 38. God is speaking of this. David is speaking of this. It says here, And shed innocent blood, even the blood of their sons and of their daughters, whom they sacrificed under the idols of Canaan, and the land was polluted with blood. Thus were they defiled with their own works and went a-whoring with their own inventions. Therefore was the wrath of the Lord kindled against his people, in so much that he abhorred his own inheritance, and he gave them into the hand of the heathen, and they that hated them ruled over them. It's beginning to sound a lot like America, isn't it? Exodus chapter 34, let's look at this, this spiritual harlotry, what the Bible says about it. Take heed to thyself, lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, whither thou goest, lest it be for a snare in the midst of thee, but ye shall destroy their altars, break, break their images, and cut down their groves. For thou shalt worship no other god, for the Lord, whose name is Jealous, is a jealous god. Lest thou make a covenant with the inhabitants of the land, and they go a-whoring after their gods. And they go a-whoring after their gods, and do sacrifice unto their gods, and one call daughters... And one call thee, and thou eat of, the, of his sacrifice, and thou take of their daughters unto thy sons, and their daughters go a-whoring after their gods, and make thy sons to go a-whoring after their gods. What's he talking about? A spirit of harlotry? Of spiritual harlotry? Notice what happened here. If you look at this, is written in Exodus chapter 34. God gave this law. Now what happened to the kings? What happened to Solomon? Solomon didn't follow this, did he? So what happened? That spirit of harlotry got him in more ways than one, physically and spiritually. Because he went a-whoring after other gods, the Bible said. He went and built, he built uh, temples and he built idols to Ashtaroth and to Baal and worshipped him. Isaiah chapter 57, please. Isaiah chapter 57. Verse number 3 through 9. But draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceresses, Sorceress, sorry. <laughs> but draw but draw near but draw near hither, ye sons of the sorceress, the seed of the adulterer and the whore. Wow. See that? Against whom do ye sport yourselves? Against whom make ye a wide mouth and draw out the tongue? Are ye not children of Wow, that sounds like that sounds like Miley Cyrus, doesn't it? All over Drudge Report, all over the news, all over everywhere with that tongue, making wide mouth with that tongue sticking out like that. Hmm. The Bible calls them sorceresses. Are you not children of transgression, a seed of falsehood? Look at that. And flaming yourselves with idols under every green tree? Slaying the children in the valleys under the cliffs of the rocks? Among the smooth stones of the stream is thy portion. They, they are thy lot. Even to them hast thou poured a drink offering. Thou hast offered a meat offering. Should I receive comfort in these? Upon a lofty and high mountain hast thou set thy bed. Even thither wentest thou up to offer sacrifice. Behind the doors also and the posts hast thou set up thy remembrance. For thou hast discovered thyself to another 
to another than me, and art gone up. Thou hast enlarged thy bed, and made thee a covenant with them. Thou lovest their bed where thou sawest it. Thou wentest to the king with ointment, and didst increase thy perfumes, and didst send thy messengers far off, and didst debase thyself even unto hell. Some about spiritual fornication there. Being seduced away from the truth. You know, one of the downfalls of the last 100 years is the fact that most preachers don't ever talk about a spirit world that's out there. Now, they got this from the rise of German rationalism that came in and this, and this need to squash any spiritualism uh, that, that, that was out there. And they don't talk about the spirit world out there. They don't talk about the fact, listen, let me, let me help you with something, okay? Because you may not know this. So let me, let, me, let me help you with this. People are still devil-possessed. Okay? People are still possessed by devils or demons, whatever you want to call them. People call them demons now, but they're called devils in the scriptures. There are still seducing spirits out there. There, there is still a devil out there with a kingdom as a principalities, powers, spiritual wickedness in high places, rulers of the darkness of this world. It is still out there. It is still happening today. It is ramped up even more as we see the rise of the occult and the false doctrine and, this, and, the, and the, the, that spirit of harlotry out there. Understand those things still go on. They are still there. It's just that most Christians have stopped informing and have stopped fighting spiritually. That's what's happened. But it's still real. And still being influenced in our world today. Leviticus chapter, and, and will be more as time goes by. Leviticus chapter 17 and verse number 6. And the priest shall sprinkle the blood upon the altar of the Lord at the door of the tabernacle of the congregation and burn the fat for a sweet savor unto the Lord. And they shall no more offer their sacrifices unto devils. Uh, would you, you believe in every word Bible, correct? Okay. So, what is that word, Brother Russ, right there that I just read? What do they sacrifice unto? Devils. Okay. So that's not idols. You understand that, right? An idol would be a man-made image that you create, that you make with your hands and you build. Then what is a devil? It is a fallen, it is either a nephila or I mean, it is either the spirit of a giant. Uh, some people call it the spirit of a giant. Uh, that's a long study. Look at sons of God, daughters of men. Uh, go to that sermon series, learn about that. Or it's fallen angels. Okay, either one. They're false spirits. That's what they are. False spirits. Okay. They were sacrificing unto false spirits. What is that? It's the spirit of harlotry. Because there is one God, and there always has been one God. Amen. And he is Jehovah, and he is Jesus Christ, and that is the one true God. Amen? It says, sacrifices unto devils after whom they have gone a whoring. Why? Because they had a covenant relationship with one God. And as soon as they, just like a married man or a married woman, if they went a whoring after another wife or another husband, they are leaving that which is right and the covenant that they have made, and they go a whoring after another. I'm going to tell you, the lines of all this stuff, as far purity and everything else, uh, they're all being destroyed today. The family is being, the definition of family is being perverted and changed, uh, like Brother Russ was saying, that, to community and all these other stupid things that are out there. The devilish spirit of harlotry is what it is. To get you off of the truth, because it is going to be, it's, we're fastly approaching a time when people do not want to hear about what's in this word more than ever. They want to reject it. Because everything that's in here is a design of how you are supposed to live your life and walk with the one true God, and it is being rejected today. There's only one way. There's only one Savior. It's a narrow road. It's not a broad road. It's a narrow one. And it's only Jesus. It says here that they sacred this shall be a statute forever unto them throughout their generations. Leviticus chapter 20, verse number 4 through 6. 
Then I will set my face against the man and against his family and will cut him off and all that go a whoring after them to oh, whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch. What did they do? They spiritually went after another god and they committed whoredom. How is that? They worshiped another god besides the god of the Bible. It is spiritual fornication to do that. They went a whoring after another god. I didn't say it. Jesus Christ said it. The Word of God says it. With Moloch. I believe Moloch is a fallen angel. I do believe that. I do believe if you study Moloch out, you'll see some interesting things. If you study in history, you'll see some even more interesting things there that go along with that, but I believe that. From among their people, they want to whoring at the whoredom with Moloch from among their people. And if the people of the land do any ways hide their eyes from the man, when he giveth up of his seed unto Moloch, and kill him not, then I will set my face against that man and against his family, and I will cut him off, and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch. From among their people, and the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits. You know how many Christians a day are watching all that garbage? You tell me how you can watch Twilight, Harry Potter, uh, what's this new thing? That's, man, there's some new thing that I, I can't remember the name of this thing, but it's wicked as, it's wicked as hell is what it is. And it's something of Walking Dead or something. I don't know. I've never seen it. Well, what's that? The, the Walking Dead, um, whatever it is, all of those things. All of those things, are they're, they're whoring after another god is what they're doing. They're, they're watching things that are devilish. Christians have no business watching that stuff. Why? It's not their God. It's glorifying evil. It's glorifying wickedness. It's glorifying those things that God hates. So why, if God said he was going to expel them out of the land, why would you entertain something that God says is whoring after other gods? Why would you fill your eyes and your heart, as a born-again believer, fill your eyes and your heart with that garbage? You need to listen. If you, if you are, go back and listen to a sermon that I preached on. Ser you can see it on Sermon Audio. It's called Ezekiel's Television. Go back and listen to that. Go back and listen to the chambers of his imagery. Oh, they were just pictures. They were just pictures on the wall. That's all they were doing was making pictures and making things on the wall. What did God call it? He called it, he's called it fornication. He called it spiritual harlotry. You better understand one thing. When you put your eyes on witchcraft and things like that and you get some kind of entertainment out of that and amusement out of that, read Romans chapter 1, then read the rest of the chapter. And it says, and those that revel in it. What does that mean? Get pleasure from, enjoy, watch. Get entertainment from. But we live in such a day and age today that everything is acceptable. Even in the church. There's so much witchcraft in the church today. It's just sick. There's so much rebellion and witchcraft in the church. Saddest thing is most of it goes on in our minds. That's why we need to be renewed daily. Amen? He says, he says here, Then I will set my face against that man, against his family, and I will cut him off, and all that go whoring after him to commit whoredom with Moloch from among them to their people, and the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits, and after wizards to go whoring after them. I will even set my face against that soul, and will cut him off from among his people. How many, how many saved people quench the spirit by, by watching these things? Psalm 73, verse number 27. For lo, they that are, are far from thee shall perish. Thou hast destroyed all them that go whoring from thee. But it is good for me to draw near to God. I have put my trust in the Lord God, that I may declare all thy works. It is good. Ezekiel 23, verse number 29 and 30. And they shall deal with thee hatefully, and shall, ter shall take away all thy labor, and shall leave thee naked and bare, and the nakedness of thy whoredoms shall be discovered, both thy lewdness and thy whoredoms. I will do these things unto thee, because thou hast gone a-whoring after the heathen, and because thou art polluted with, with their idols. 
Did you see that? You're polluted with their idols. How many in the churches today are polluted with this wickedness? Polluted with wickedness, allowing themselves to watch things on television, allowing themselves to entertain themselves with devils. Think about it. Makes sense, doesn't it? Hosea chapter 4, please. <laughs> verse number 9. Hosea chapter 4, verse number 9. And there shall be like people, like priests. And I will punish them for their ways and reward them their doings. For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall commit whoredom and shall not increase, because they have left off to take heed to the Lord. Whoredom and wine and new wine take away the heart. My people ask counsel at their stocks, and their staff declareth unto them. For the spirit of whoredoms hath caused them to err. See, there's that spirit. There's that mystery of Babylon, that mystery of iniquity that's always at work trying to seduce those away from God. And they have gone a-whoring from under their God. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms because the shadow thereof is good. Therefore your daughters shall commit whoredom and your spouses shall commit adultery. Listen. I will not punish your daughters when they commit whoredom, nor your spouses when they commit adultery. For themselves are separated with whores, and they sacrifice with harlots. Therefore the people that doth not understand shall fall. You know what God is saying there? You didn't want me to be head over you. You didn't want to worship me. You didn't care about the order that I put down. You ignored every order that I put down and every direction that I gave. So now I'm not going to do anything when your daughters go off and do this. I'm not going to do anything when your wives go off and do this. I'm just going to let it happen. Why? Because you were following God. You weren't following God's order. You know, I wish people would understand this, that when you deviate from what God teaches and what God gives and you think of your own inventions and your own ideas and your own way of doing things which is much of what modern day Christianity or modern day churches have done you're on your own you can't blame God for the results you can't say well I took him to church yeah, but the rest of your life wasn't ordered after the Lord. Big deal you took him to church. It was more like a show. That doesn't mean anything. Did you follow the book? Did you teach them to respect the Bible? Did you teach them to follow the Word of God? There is a spirit that goes along with all this, the spirit of that same God is spirit that we see in Babylon. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse number 1, the Bible says, Now the Spirit speaketh expressly that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. What do we have today? We have designer church today. What do you want to hear? That's what we have. Or we have people say, well, I don't like what he's preaching. I don't like what he's saying. I don't think I need to hear that. I don't think that'll help my family. I don't think that'll help me. Again, like I said Wednesday night, all Scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished into all good works. You listen to this and listen closely, that we are in a time when, when people don't want sound doctrine. We're in these latter times when people are giving heed to seducing spirits. They don't want to respect any authority at all. 
That's, that's where we're at today. I'm not talking about a pastor being a dictator or, 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 or you know, um, trying, to, trying to invade into your home or invade into your, you know, you know, your marriage or anything like that. I'm not, I'm not even talking about that. I'm, I'm talking about plain Bible preaching that gives you instruction to grow thereby. What is that spirit that hates that? It's the harlot spirit that hates it. It's the harlot spirit that bristles at the truth. It's a, I'm not saying you're possessed. I'm saying there's a seducing spirit that whispers in your ear to tell you don't follow God. No, you don't want that. That won't help your family. You don't need to hear that. You don't have to listen to that preacher. You don't have to do any of those things. You don't need that King James Bible. There's a lot of different Bibles out there. Yeah, I know a guy that runs a big that ran a big ministry, and uh, good good ministry, you know, in a lot of ways, good ministry. But you know, good good on the home, good on family, good on the order of the home, and everything else like that. But you know what he wanted to do? He wanted to replace the King James Bible with the Geneva Bible, and it was his goal. To do that, it was his goal. He put advertisements out and everything else, trying to get people to go for the Geneva Bible. Just grab onto the Geneva Bible. Well, then come to find out, a resignation letter comes in from his ministry saying that he was inappropriate with a young lady and had to resign. Now, I'm not pleased about that. That's sad. It breaks my heart to see somebody go through that. I, I don't know. You, just because you reveal something doesn't mean you like it. Just because you talk about something doesn't mean you have joy in it. Understand that. I, I get no satisfaction out of seeing somebody fall because other people get hurt. So there's no joy in that. But you see that. There's other men. I, I've heard other men that were going to make revisions to the King James Bible, and they end up in that same spirit of harlotry. I wonder about that. We live in a day and age of this spiritual fornication, this spiritual idolatry. Adultery. The two are linked together. Believe me, fornication is not of God. It is of the devil's seducing spirit designed to seduce away. It's eerie how close those two between spiritual and physical fornication really come about. But one thing you have to understand about the spiritual harlot, the mystery Babylon, and we'll expound on it later, like any harlot, it's not real love. They want something in return for it. They want payment in return for it. What's that payment? Your soul. Your life. See, the devil offers something to people. He offers that seducing spirit to people. What is his goal? His goal is not to give you eternal life because he can't. His goal is to have you have as much fun here as you can and then watch you as you slip into hell and laugh all the way as you go down. That's his goal. That's what he wants to do. Turn to Judges chapter 2. We're almost finished with this one here. And yet they would not hearken unto their judges, verse number 17, but they went a-whoring after other gods and bowed themselves unto them. They turned quickly out of the way which their fathers walked in, obeying the commandments of the Lord. But they did not so. And when the Lord raised them up judges, then the Lord was with the judge and delivered them out of the hand of their enemies all the days of the judge. For it repented the Lord because of their groanings by reason of them that oppressed them and vexed them. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers in following other gods to serve them. And to bow down unto them, they ceased not from their own doings, nor from their stubborn way. Why? That's that seducing spirit. No, follow your own way. You'll be fine. Just do it your way. You know what you need. You know, that's, that's a, that's a, that's a, that seducing spirit is funny. 
uh, in the sense, or ironic in the sense that, you know, you, you know what you need. I mean, you don't have to listen to anybody else. You know, you don't need any counsel. Just make your own decisions and do what you want. And don't base it off the Word of God. Just base it off what you feel and, and, and some outward sign that you think you see. Foolishness. Utter foolishness. And what does it lead to? Destruction. Death. That's what it leads to. And it came to pass when the judge was dead that they returned and corrupted themselves more than their fathers and following other gods to serve them and to bow down to them. They ceased not from their doings nor from their stubborn way. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. And he said, Because of this people hath transgressed my covenant, which I commanded their fathers, have not hearkened unto, me, unto my voice. Ezekiel chapter 16. We're almost done here. Ezekiel chapter 16, verse number 35. The spirit of fornication. Wherefore, O harlot, hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God, because thy filthiness was poured out, and thy nakedness discovered through thy whoredoms with thy lovers, with all the idols of thy abominations, and by the blood of thy children, which thou didst give unto them. Behold, therefore, I will gather all thy lovers with whom thou hast taken pleasure, and all them that hast, thou hast loved, and with all them that thou hast hated, and I will even gather them round about against thee, and I will and will discover thy nakedness unto them, that they may see all thy nakedness, and I will judge thee as as women that break wedlock and shed blood are judged. Same. See that? And I will give thee blood and fury and jealousy, and I will also give thee into their hand, and they shall throw down thy eminent place, and shall break down thy high places. They shall strip thee also thy clothes, and shall take thy fair jewels, and leave thee naked and bare. They shall also bring up a company against thee, and they shall stone thee with stones, and thrust thee through with swords, and they shall burn thine houses with fire and execute judgment upon thee in the sight of many women. And I will cause thee to cease from playing the harlot. Thou shalt give no hire any more. So will I make my fury toward thee to rest, and my jealousy shall depart from thee. And I will be quiet, and I will be no more angry, because thou hast not remembered the days of thy youth, but, that, but hast fretted me in all these things. Behold, therefore, I will also recompense the way upon thine head, saith the Lord God. And thou shalt not commit this lewdness above all thine abominations. That tells you what God hates. I want to show you something. Turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and we'll be done. This is it, 1 Corinthians chapter 6. I want you to see this. I want you to think about this thought as we go into some of the other messages here. I want you to think of what the Lord is saying here. This is spiritually, by the way. Now, physically, obviously, we understand this to be true, but spiritually is the lesson here that the Lord is trying to give us. I want you to see this in the Scriptures. I want you to think about this, and you, you'll, you'll understand why we hold to what we do and why we do what we do here. Know ye not that your bodies are the members of Christ? Shall I then take the members of Christ and make them the members of a harlot? God forbid. What know ye not that he which is joined to a harlot is one body? For two saith he shall be one flesh, but he that is joined unto the Lord is one spirit. Flee fornication. Every sin that a man doeth is without the body, but he that committeth fornication sitteth against his own body. What know ye not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost which is in you, which ye have of God? And ye are not your own, for ye are bought with a price. Therefore glorify God in your body and your spirit, which are God's. What is he speaking of here? Spiritually. He's talking about physically too, obviously. But he's given a message of spiritually as well. You know, you have to be awful careful what doctrines and what, 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 what teachings you receive into your heart, what you allow to be taught to you. Because there are all kinds of seducing spirits out there. There's the harlot out there. Now, we understand the end times, the harlot we believe to be Rome, the Roman Catholic Church, the, the mystery Babylon, okay? Uh, it's all connected. I mean, there's a few different things that go along with that. There's the spiritual, there's the physical. I don't have time to get into all that. But there's a lot in the end times that's going to come. Needless to say, the spiritual fornicator, the spiritual fornication, is that Jezebel, is that spirit of Rome, is that spirit of harlotry, is that queen of heaven. Okay? Now, in that, we understand that it's a seducing spirit to take you away and draw you away from God. Now, what is going on in America today with churches? What are they trying to do? They're trying... The Pope is spending his time linking everybody up together. 
He's taken the the homosexuals and he's trying to bring them in. He's taken the he's taken the uh, the the atheists and he's bringing them in. He's taken the Muslims and he's bringing them in. Why? Because it's the end time harlot spirit. So what would they love better to do here? To link you to a harlot. They would like to link the, the devil would like to link this church to a harlot. That's what he would like. So, what he would like is is for us to have open communion or close, which is the same as open. What he would like us to do is accept every baptism that's out there. Why? Because you start linking into spiritual harlotry. Think about it. What he would like to do is have you mingle your church and mix it with the contemporary movement. With the rock and roll church, with the holy hip hop concerts, with, with all of those other things to link them together into one. Why? Because this is the goal. This is the goal of the end times. To make everybody one, to bring everybody into one spirit. That's the goal of the Antichrist. To deceive. To deceive those that are left, those that remain. To fool them, to trick them. And that's what this harlotry spirit does, this spirit of fornication does. Bring them all in, make them all the same. Oh, you can you don't have to have that separation. You don't have to have that. You don't have to do any of those things. Oh, why be so divisive? Well, because doctrine divides, that's why. Plain and simple, it does. Jesus said, I came to not to peace, but a sword. And a sword he sends. And doctrine divides, and it's and you're supposed to be. That's why local churches are supposed to be separate and autonomous. Because I have no, I, I, we have no authority over everyone, but we do have what we have here together. We do have a covenant that we make together to live for God. We do examine those. We do examine ourselves. But today, it's, nah, just break down all those things. We don't need any of those things. They just cause problems. No, they're for protection. All right, let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord, for this day and, this, and your word. We pray, Lord, you'd bless it. Pray you bless the next service, Lord, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We'll take a few minutes here. We'll get started again.